Boom. I think we got it. <laughs> Danny Daniels in the house, everybody. Hi. What's up? Let me turn my, my audio. Thank you for joining today. Dude, of course. So this is my like pleasure. this is like my first time like interviewing somebody. I've never done it really before. I feel like it's like a skill that needs to be fine tuned. <laughs> so bear with me. If you're like a pro. You have like your dinner with Danny show, and then your um, <laughs> two onions podcast. So you have a lot more experience. I don't mind taking your cherry. <laughs> Okay, so I have a whole, like, list of categories because, like, I always think that you're such a fascinating person, and I wanted oh, to, like, you. talk about different ones um, and just, like, let everyone get to know you. Um, okay. I guess we can start with, like, art just because, like, you're, I guess, one of the, the only act true artists, right? Like, an actual artist that's in the adult industry, um, not, like, what we make is art, like, that whole thing. Um, yeah, yeah. so, like, what is your, like, creative process? Like, how do you, like, find inspiration for, like, all of your projects? Ooh, um, it kind of depends. If I'm doing a show, like, in a gallery, um, I usually pick, like, a, a general subject. Um, or if I'm doing something that, like, inspires me, like, sometimes I'll do a person that inspires me and it kind of evolves into a show. So... Um, just kind of depends on what the project is. If I'm doing commissions, obviously it, it's dependent upon whoever's ordering them, but, um, mm -hmm. I usually try to stick to people that I inspire or it's the people that I like as mm -hmm. opposed to like, just kind of like doing it for the money type thing. Oh yeah. That's so I like way. to, <laughs> I've definitely said no to commissions before just because I'm like, no, I don't like, I don't vibe with that. Person. Right. And it like didn't represent you properly. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So how much do you think that, like, your art, like, affects your filming career? Because I feel like they're they're really related, right? Like, when I started painting again when I was in porn, I kind of, like, stopped, at, and then I got into porn, and then when I started painting um, and doing both at the same time, I didn't want to, like, use Danny Daniels mm -hmm. um, as, like, an easy way to, like, get popularity or traffic to my art. I kind of wanted to give it its own like chance mm -hmm. so um I actually go by Kira Lee and like I do sometimes promote it on my Danny accounts mm -hmm. but I try to keep them like pretty much separate it's kind of nice because there's the porn side of me and then there's the art side of me mm -hmm. so it's kind of like this nice balance that works no like, definitely like, kind of like with you and cooking you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's like two different sides yeah and then you, it's like at least with me it's like part of me wants to see if I can like make it happen again from scratch because obviously like you made Danny Daniels happen from scratch right like you made like this huge brand like I don't know if, I'm sure a lot of you guys don't understand how rare it is to be successful in the adult industry but to be successful and then leave and still be successful is even that much more rare um so you've already <laughs> like created this thing and made it happen from scratch so I think it's like you want to try and do it again and then it kind of feels like cheating if you use something that's already so big <laughs> to launch right exactly yeah and I didn't want people to like my art because of the Danny Daniels name right because like they're like they love you so they support you and you want like you wanted like an unbiased like I right exactly that's so funny exactly yeah and I do have fans that, like, follow my art and stuff, and I do appreciate that. But, um, you know, I try to keep it. Like, when I do shows in galleries, like, mm -hmm. unless you know, you wouldn't know. Oh, no. And, like, like you don't <laughs> look like it either. Like, you look like just, like, a normal woman, like, very, like, <laughs> usually dressed, like, super classy, like, pumps. Like, you would just never know. So it's, I always you love that. Knew. Yeah, right? <laughs> so innocent. Also, so, like, when it comes to, like, art and entertainment, like, so Eric and I just, like, love, like, before this whole pandemic happened, we loved, like, stalking your guys' story, because you were always, like, at an opera, or at some, like, <laughs> insane Michelin restaurant, and, like, it's almost like you guys just are constantly, like, just, like, surrounding yourself with all this, like, art and entertainment and, like, stimulus um, so, like, what would you say is, like, the importance of that, like, in your life? Like, how has that, like, helped shape you? I've always been, like, a very artsy person. Mm -hmm. I'm an only child, so I've always been, like, kind of forced to entertain myself. Mm -hmm. um, and with, 
I've always been into like opera and shows and anything artsy. I love museums. I actually like collect book mu museum books from everywhere we go. And when I met my husband, like we got along great because we have so many things of that in common. So, you know, from we go to jazz shows, we go to, you know, opera, ballet, symphony, mm -hmm. especially New York, Broadway shows, musicals, you name it. And um, it's whenever I feel a lack of creativity, whether it's in porn or with painting, I always am like, okay, let's go do something artsy, like artsy. I should oh, say, I love know, that. Like going to see a show or going to see something. And then like usually both Vic and I, because Vic writes, and so we both will be like, just kind of, you kind of get motivated, just like being around that energy mm -hmm. and being around other painters or other artists. You're just like, okay, like, I don't know what it is or what it is sparks in me but oh I love yeah, that probably a combination yeah like even with porn like I'm like god I don't want to shoot like I got no ideas I'll like go see a show I don't know like Chicago on Broadway I don't know off the top of my head yeah like, oh, okay I want to do like a fishnet scene I want to do something in yeah the 20s. I want to do you know mm -hmm. so I like the idea of you know giving other girls the opportunity to have other streams of income Mm -hmm. other than their tits and ass, you know, and being able to be creative in a different way. Totally. And, try, and you know, connecting with their fans in a different way, so. Right, because yeah, I feel like there's, fun. like, this huge <laughs> sense of, like, fulfillment that, at least for me, like, I always, like, was, like, striving for, and it's, like, tough mm -hmm. when you only are expected to do, like, this, have this one outlet, right? Like, you want all, you want yeah. another way to express yourself, and you also want to be, like, validated as, like, a human, and for some reason, a lot of people take, like, the humanity away from porn stars, like, you're not a person, you don't live, breathe, or have mm -hmm. feelings, um, so I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of us are, like, trying to, like, maybe prove that we, you know, we are able to do these other things and, like, show our humanity. Even if you, if, and I think that you and I have talked about this before, but, like, even if we cured cancer tomorrow, it'd be like, oh, she cured cancer, but she's also a porn star. Right. Like, there's no way of, like, becoming just a human being in right. porn. No, it's forever. It's, like, a forever thing. And I think, like, mm -hmm. um, I saw someone, like, retweeted something that Cherie posted that was saying, like, all these girls right now that are strapped for money are joining sites like OnlyFans and they don't understand like the repercussions. Like they think that it's quick and easy money and everyone can do mm -hmm. it and you're not going to be ostracized from like your friend's family workplace and once everything is over they're going to get hit with reality and it's it's a very tough path. Like I didn't understand that when I went into it. I definitely don't have regrets. Like I love that I got into that. I think it like was my path. But for someone who's just doing it to, like, put, like, the electricity on, like, you don't know what you're getting into. It, yeah. Ha paying your bills for a month or two isn't worth a life sentence. No. You know? You have to be smart about it. It has to be something that you're ready to commit to forever. Right. It's not, you know, this. It, it's not like you're going to go strip for a weekend and hope that no one takes a picture for you. Right. You. you know what I mean? It's very on different. the internet. Somebody is screenshotting. You know, someone's yeah. screen recording, screenshotting. All the time. You know, doing something, yeah, and it's never, you're never going to avoid it. Your parents are going to find out. Your friends are going to find out. And I'm not saying that it's, that the industry is bad in any way, shape, or form, because I love it, mm -hmm. but it's not for everyone, and it's not right. something you can just, like, dip your toe into and then be like, oh, I had my porn phase, but now I'm out. It's like, no. Sell no. <laughs> mm -mm. no. your soul. Exactly. Like, hope, make it worth it. Make sure you really love it, or it's, like, your long-term career plan. I don't think, you know, people should go run and start an OnlyFans and show their tits for a week and for, and assume that it's no, going to go away. No, don't but do I that. I also hope that, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, I also hope that, like, people are starting to become more accepting mm -hmm. in a sense because you do, I mean, OnlyFans, there are people on there that don't get nude. You mm -hmm. know, there's, you know, fitness people, um, influencers, artists that, I mean, they're not as many, but there right. are there. So hopefully it's kind of, like, kind of blurring the lines. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> Hopefully someday we won't have a scarlet letter on our forehead. Oh, God. I know. I totally agree. <laughs> I know you're interviewing me, but do you have any, have you had any issues, like, especially, like, with cooking? Is How, like, strict is it if you want to, like, be a chef or cook or So it's weird. Like it depends on, it depends on the chef and, like, what his goals are, I guess, because I've had some, like, pretty famous chefs that like openly follow me that are openly fans um that when I show up to their restaurants like I'm treated like a king like they just love it 
um, and they don't care. So I think, like, they get to kind of be, like, rock stars a little bit where they're, like, allowed to, like, be a little deviant. But then there's some that are like, oh, well, I would love to do a show with you, but... And I'm like, if Snoop Dogg can be Martha Stewart's sidekick, why can't I? Right? He's done way worse things than I have done. Like, that is just maybe not on camera. (laughs) You know what I mean? Um, No, I totally... Totally. But even with Twitch, like we did, um, we did like an auto show, the New York auto show a couple years ago, and we were live streaming it. And we had like some like, you know, D list. I mean, I was definitely the most famous person there, but like some D list celebrities. Um, and like one of the guys was like, I didn't know like what she did. Make sure you cut every scene that we were in the same room together. Like, at a public event, like, just didn't even want to be seen next to me. And I was like, good luck, buddy. Like, Yeah. And he was, like, a musician. I was like, it's, what it's happened? To, like, I understand that it's, like, not everyone has to jump on the, like, porn totally. train. But, like, that's about that's extreme. Right? I was like, you, you know, would maybe never maybe have like, known. like, a pastor. <laughs> right? Like, there's girls. There's, like, the um, trade models there that are in, like, scandalous outfits. I'm wearing, like, jeans and a sweater. I'm like, but that's okay. Exactly. I think if you're going to have your stance, like, it just needs to kind of be, like, across the board. And you can't say, well, sexuality is okay if it's here, but sexuality is not okay mm-hmm. if it's here, right? Like, it's just, like, kind of just choose. I don't know. Exactly. Gets me heated. No, I totally, I totally. It makes sense. It, you said it perfectly. It's like you can't choose, like, oh, well, she doesn't have a name, but she's in pasty, so that's fine. Right. Like, I just, <laughs> you're still selling the idea of sex. So it's just, exactly. it's the same thing at the end of the day. You did mention your awesome husband that helps you with all of your ideas. Yeah. When it comes to, obviously, like, our line of work, and I, I don't even think it's just necessarily adult work, right? Because, like, obviously, that it takes a, a special kind of person, if you're not in the industry, like a civilian, to marry or date someone in there. Like, you have to have, like, a lot of confidence. But I think also when you have, like, a very driven woman in general, like, especially if she's entrepreneurial and just, um, like, just her own boss and she is – like, as financially successful as, like, you are. What have you guys learned about being married together and about, like, not to, like, boost each other up and not necessarily compete with each other? Like, how do you have, like, a healthy, strong, like, marriage when both of you are entrepreneurs and both of you are, like, these very, like, strong-headed individuals? It's funny because usually it's, like, you think, like, one person would be, like, the dom role Mm -hmm. and one person would be, like, the sub, like, the husband-wife, even if you're a same-sex couple. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, Vic and I are both very much, like, the masculine role in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that in a sense of, like, oh, Vic's, like, a little bitch. Like, he's not Mm -hmm. (laughs) at all. But um, I think it's really graceful the way he can be a husband and be a strong partner, but he can also, he also knows when to like, let me lead. Mm -hmm. And he, it doesn't like sacrifice his masculinity. Mm -hmm. You know, if I do better one month and he does better another month, it doesn't mean anything. It's we're an actual, I think it's like we're an actual team. Mm -hmm. If one of us is hurting, the other one picks up the reins, Mm -hmm. you know, when, and vice versa, you know, he's, they had these great moments and I've had these great moments and no matter what, it's, there's not something where, oh, my wife is doing so amazing. I'm not a good. I'm not good enough. Or mm-hmm. you know, I, I should be doing better. It's like no, just celebrate that your partner is doing great. Be a team. Mm-hmm. Don't be in this competition of who's the dominant head of the house. Mm-hmm. And I think it's partially that, and partially you know, Vic is just like naturally not a jealous person. Mm-hmm. He doesn't care that I do porn. He doesn't care, you know, that I've fucked thousands of people and mm-hmm. he, if anything it like gives him more confidence because I want to be with him mm-hmm. and we can communicate about everything mm-hmm. I tell people all the time I'm like any relationship problem that you have can probably be solved or fixed with communication and yep. if, or you'll find out that you're not for each other but the, you know the more you hide the more trouble you're going to get into and even if you feel embarrassed like even if it's I want to explore something sexually I'll fucking tell him mm-hmm. you know I, even if it's embarrassing for me I know I can come to him and tell him anything mm-hmm. and he will listen to me and take in and, and not make fun of me and get through it with me. <laughs> no, so like I guess like do you think that's just like a person? Oh, he's saying let me have to do TikToks, he just put <laughs> <out. laughs> That's where he draws the line. He draws the line at TikTok. Yeah, he draws the line at he 
like, it's so funny because, like, so many people see Vic through my social media, and he's always, like, this grumpy dude. <laughs> I love he's, it, like, though. He's, like, grumpy old man. It's and so it's, good. Like, oh. But in real life, like, he's actually just, like, this really nice guy. He just hates social media. So, Eric's the same way. You know. <laughs> Everyone always thought that Eric, like, hated me, and they're like, they must have a really horrible, ma- like, marriage, because Eric's always scowling or, like, yelling at me to turn my yeah. phone off. I'm like, no, he just hates social media, and I'm constantly, like, yeah. putting it in his face. Um, <laughs> and, and, like, I'm sure Eric's the same as Vic, where, like, he would never tell you not to do it, mm-hmm. but if you involve him, he's going to be, like, that little kid, like, dragging his feet. Yep. Like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So with you guys, do you think – so I have a couple questions – do you think that it's, like, um, just, like, your your personalities that's, like, made the relationship so easy? Like, I don't want to say easy because no relationship is, like, easy, but, like, just make yeah. it work? Or do you, has it been, like, you've had to see call each other out on shortcomings and, like, work on growing together to, like, tackle issues? Or is it just, it just works? I think there's, like, there's, like, levels of issues in a relationship. Mm-hmm. I mean, we genu- generally... We're, I think I think relationship, any marriage, whatever, fifty percent sex and fifty percent compatibility. Mm-hmm. You can't have one or the other, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And people can say like, oh, well, what if you're not having sex? Oh, that's still sex compatible. If you have two people that aren't fucking and they're cool with it. Mm-hmm. You're still fine, right? And so you have that, and then so the so the compatibility. It's like, do we have issues? Of course, like every couple has issues. Right. I mean, are they these huge red flags that I'm ignoring? No, mm-hmm. you know, we fight, we we argue, we disagree, but we also communicate again. So if I fuck up and I'm super bitchy, I'll come in, you know, when I pull down and be like, I'm sorry, that was really fucking, I'm really fucking rude. Mm-hmm. Or if he so, does something that I don't like and vice versa, but mm-hmm. you know, there's it's definitely a two or a three. We're not fighting about like, you fucked the housekeeper. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're not, he's not having, like, a fair side right. back. It's like, you leave your fucking dishes in the sink and I want to punch you in the face. <laughs> right, but for some people, that's, like, a very real thing. And I think especially right now, like, a lot of couples aren't used to being around their significant other for, like, this amount of time. Yeah. So you see, like, a lot of issues that are going in with, like, you know, police phone calls and hotlines and what have you. So, like coming from someone who works from home and does spend a lot of time with their partner, like traveling and like you guys just have like that really close intimacy that a lot of people don't Mm -hmm. have. Like what advice would you give couples that are newly experiencing like this amount of time together and like realizing like it's not as easy as they thought it was going to be? I think that you should marry your best friends or be with your best Mm -hmm. friends. If if you don't want to get married, whatever, teach their own. Vic is my best friend. Like, I have very close friends, but he is by far, like, my ride-or-die best friend. So hanging out with him never gets boring. It never gets tiring. I never want to be away from him. I never want space. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in, like, a you should spend each and every second together. But I I never am that woman that's, like, I want to go have a girl's trip to get away from my husband. Mm -hmm. No, I want to have a girl's trip to hang out with my girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Not to, like, ditch the ball and chain. And I think that's important. And also, you know... He evicts the same way, so we're compatible in that sense. You know, I have another friend who hit her and her partner are very much compatible, but they need space. Mm-hmm. They can't be in each other. They just personally need time alone, mm-hmm. and that works for them. So it's, right. But if you get into a partnership where one person wants to be all up in your face and the other person wants space, you're going to have, like, some issues. Mm-hmm. And, again, it's, like, you know, communicating. I'm not mad at you. I don't want to not be around you, but I need time for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I need a day for just me. But if you don't communicate and you just ghost somebody or go leave and then they're sitting at home stewing, thinking about, like, why don't they want to be around me? Oh, the relationship's over. Oh, I might as well go cheat and text these other hoes because, you know, my partner's going to be around me. It's just, like, spirals. So, No, I totally agree. We like all the attention. (laughs) Yeah, and I think... For so. me, I totally agree with the best friend part because Eric's the same way with me. Like, absolutely, like either, I'm not closer to anybody on this like earth than I am with him. Um, and for us, yeah. like, I think the communication thing we had to like work on. I think I had very bad role models growing up as to like what a healthy relationship was. So I was just mm-hmm. kind of like doing what I had been seeing like as a child and like not really making my own decisions just kind of like a little programmed robot that was like acting 
as I thought I should. And then finally, like, Eric is just, like, just, like, a star child. Like, he's just not from this planet. So he, like, is – I've never met anyone like him. But he's like, wait a second. Why are you acting like this? Like, are these really, like, your core beliefs and your thoughts? Or are you, like, conditioned to think this way? And he challenged, like, fundamental, like, belief systems that I had at that time. Right? Like, I thought – I was the most jealous person on the planet. Like, I was, like, that crazy jealous person. Um, and then I had to, like, ask myself, like, wh why do I have these thoughts? Like, what do I want from a relationship? Mm -hmm. Am I happy with this? And then I kind of learned, like, to use my words. And it's okay to, like, be mad, but it's not okay to be mad and throw something. And it, you know what I mean? And then yeah. <laughs> the more you discuss, like, these things, you'll actually, like, unpack that you don't really have a lot of the beliefs that you thought you did. And all of a sudden, like, you discover yourself in a new way and you discover your partner in a new way. And I think that's when you truly, like, connect. Um, and I think so many what people... Is... Hmm? I, I, no, I think that's important. Like, you know, and your relationship, your vision of a personal, perfect, sorry, personal relationship, perfect relationship might be different than mine. Totally. There's no right answer. Totally. It's just, like, what you were saying, it's like, you grow up and you think, like, oh, I have to get married, buy a house, have kids mm -hmm. have two kids have three kids yeah have them go to college you know stay at home don't stay at home whatever yeah and it's like but will that make you happy mm -hmm. if the answer is no then that's not what you should be doing you should be doing you know like like Vic and I don't want kids mm -hmm. you know I don't I don't like children I'm not a motherly person mm -hmm. like even if like Vic is going through something I'm not motherly like I wish <laughs> I was but uh -huh. I'm just not that person right and so Having kids, like, it's just not on the table for us. And that doesn't mean that we're doing a relationship wrong. It's mm -hmm. just we, neither of us want them. He already has two that are adults. He doesn't want to go through it again. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you know, and and, and you you just had a baby. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, and that works for you. So it's just identifying, you know, what it is. And I've been through similar things where, like, I've done something and, like, oh, this, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be doing this. And, like, Vic's done the same thing where he's, like, yeah, is, is that what you want, mm -hmm. or is that just you being conditioned to thinking that that's what's right? Right. So do you feel, I feel like obviously not, making the decision to not have children is more rare than not. I think some people just pump out kids because they think like that's the next step, and a lot of people do it to mm -hmm. fix a relationship, or a lot of people do it to feel complete, like there's a lot of wrong reasons to have children. But for some reason, we don't question that. We question the woman that makes the decision to not have them. And I feel like a lot of like society like bullies them. Did you like have? I don't know. Did you have those experiences? Did you have people that were like would like badger you and be like, "Well, why not?" Or are you sure? Oh or there must be something wrong with you. Yeah, yeah. Like um, one of my sides of the family is very, very, very small. On both sides, actually. But it was like between me and my cousin and it was like if one of us don't pump out a baby then that's it and the whole family was like pressuring at least i don't know her experience but at least pressuring me like when are you gonna have you know when are you gonna give me a grandchild when are you gonna have a baby when are you gonna get married and mm -hmm. i'm like i don't want this right <laughs> like yeah and it's not for me and you know even like my fans and i use that in quotes because it's one of the rudest things i get on an everyday basis is when are you gonna have kids Really? When are you going to have babies? All the time. All, I don't know what it is, but, like, I get a lot of guys, like, emailing, messaging me. Whenever I do, like, a Q&A, they always ask. And I'm like, first of all, what if I physically could not have children? Mm -hmm. What if I had a condition that didn't allow me to, like, have a baby? Like, the mental, like, why would you say that to a woman? Right. You know, what if, you know, get this fucking fit. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't happening mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean but like the public doesn't know that until now but <laughs> sorry it's, like, it's, so in <laughs> it's so incredibly rude to me to be like to assume that you know I don't I don't consider myself a feminist but this is going to sound very feminist to assume that we're on this planet to do nothing but suck dick and breed babies mm -hmm. is far from offensive I want to own businesses I want to invest I want to travel the world mm -hmm. I want to be with my partner I don't want I don't want kids Right. And people can't fathom that. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, oh, well, you know, you're not, you're not going until you have a baby. Yeah, totally, which is crazy because <laughs> I think that people project that because that's, like, their reality. Like, they didn't spend the time mm -hmm. to get to know themselves, to follow well, their dreams. in a society that that was the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you grow up in a country that's very, like, repressed. 
mm-hmm. that's you know what you grew up thinking is right mm-hmm. and if someone else isn't doing what you think is right they must be in the wrong right otherwise it, it makes like your uh your choices um invalid right so it's like one mm-hmm. of us can be right not both of us which i think is so crazy because yeah. it's like <laughs> We also have this idea of individuality, which means that nothing can be the same. Like every relationship is different. Like the one that you have with yourself mm-hmm. and your partner is going to be different than like your neighbor or your best friend. And it's we yeah. have like these like little cookie cutters that we keep trying to force everyone in, and then wondering why like people are so unhappy. It's like you kind of have to like make tweaks to make it very much like for you and for your partner. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. Exactly. Exactly. Crazy to me. Um, but again, though, no, communication. It's all about the communication. <laughs> I know, and why is that so hard? It's like I I feel like I wasn't properly communicating anything until, like, my mid to late 20s. Like, it's, like, a very new it's skill for me. you no longer give a shit what people think. I think when you're younger, it's still, like, in your head. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's probably it. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, my husband's 50. Like, he doesn't care. He's, like, I'm old. I don't give a shit. Like, I don't care what anyone <laughs> things to me I don't care you know mm-hmm. but when we got together like I wasn't in that mental space I'm, I'm closer to that now but it's hard it's hard to stick your neck out especially if you like the person you're talking to mm-hmm. you know to put yourself out in the old like here's all the cards on the table like what if it, that fear, fear of being like turned down or broken up with or not wanted mm-hmm. you know so I had some like I guess like worldly questions so if you had like a life philosophy because we kind of touched on it like what would your philosophy be like on life always do what makes you happy as long as you're not hurting anyone i like that do you believe in faith i'm not a religious person do i believe in faith Mm -hmm. um i believe in i believe in faith in the sense that i believe that you can manifest those things i love that as long in a sense in the fact like I don't think that if I sit here and I meditate for three days, I'm going to teach myself to fly. Right. But I think I can focus my energy on certain things. And if you stay negative, your life's going to be revolving around the negative. If you stay positive, you're going to stay positive. Mm-hmm. So, like, this is going to sound really, like, hippie, white girl, woo-woo. But before Vic and I got together, before we even met, I had well, – we actually did meet, but – before I had manifested my, my perfect partner. Mm-hmm. I had got out of a really bad breakup. You knew this story. Oh yeah, and I just, I just literally like spend every day just like getting manifesting, just meditating, envisioning what I want in a partner, down to like looks, what they do, where they live, their background, their core values. Mm-hmm. You know, if people look at a partner like I want a brunette with blue eyes, and it's like, okay, but is the guy like a serial killer? Like, <laughs> what's on the, in the core? <laughs> you know, I mean, what? When the looks fade, are you guys still going to be compatible? Mm-hmm. And so I just, I constantly, constantly, constantly. And um, Vic is everything. Everything I imagined. Except for I wanted a brunette. And he was a brunette. We lost all his hair. So I'll take it. <laughs> right? And that's, I find like it's so crazy. Because if you're into like the whole idea of manifestation, um, like you have to be so specific. Because the thing that yeah. you leave out is like going to show up. Right? Like. That's, like, a good example. Exactly. Um, I've had exactly. it happen before. They say if you're trying to manifest something, like, um, with a partner, so, like, let's say you're trying to get a house together, if you don't have mm-hmm. everything lined up together, it's just not going to happen. Because if he wants, like, a log cabin and you want this, like, super contemporary house, like, you guys aren't actually asking for the same thing to have, like, to show and up. And bounce. Exactly. Exactly. Like, when we got this place, we both were thinking about, like, what do you want? We had so many dinners that we would sit down and just talk about, like, what do you want in a place? Like, mm-hmm. what's your dream place look like? You know, especially, like, this period in time. I can't say, like, oh, I want to buy a castle in the middle of New York. It's not realistic. <laughs> right. You know? So you have to stay realistic and, you know, stay focused on what it is you know, you're after. Yeah, it's really cool. So are you doing anything for the full moon? Um, I usually, I, I do like a candle, a candle stuff. I'm like, I'm like witchy light. I love it. <laughs> like, I don't take anything. I'm, I'm a big go with your gut person. Mm-hmm. Um, so if my gut says, like, take a bath, light some candles and have a bottle of wine, that's what I'm going to do. You know, mm-hmm. if I want to release something, I'll go release something. If I want to bring something in, I just kind of, I don't really like 
abide by the rules. I just kind of do what like my gut tells me. Mm-hmm. If I'm if just feeling like stressed out about something, I'm like, okay, what's been bothering me? Maybe I'll like write it all down and burn it, or you know, that's one of my like, favorite things to do. Other way. Yeah, I don't know why. It just like wanna... it feels like magical when you're when you're actually like, setting these things that you're trying to release on fire. Like it just it's a very therapeutic. Like even if you don't believe it, I like think, I just yeah. encouraged. Yeah, I think there's something just like very powerful. You know, no matter what you believe in, writing something down that you want to let go of, whether it's a letter to somebody or just like bad traits that you're just tired of having, mm-hmm. and just I think yeah, just burning it. It's like very symbolic, mm-hmm. right? So maybe I'll do that. What about tonight. you? Do you have anything planned? So I was I need to cleanse all my crystals because I haven't done that in a really long oh, yeah. time. Um, and I bought like a I'm couple really new ones. <laughs> I'm so bad, and I'm like, oh, like I need to like refresh my energy in the house. I want to do that. And then I want to do something with Eric just because like being new parents, it's like very hard. To, like balance doesn't exist. Right. Like, uh, mm-hmm. the, the Tao, Tao I think says like bal or balance is always striving for balance. Like that's what balance is like, because the actuality of it like isn't real. So even mm-hmm. like the striving, like we're off on, like, it's just like, there's a not enough time in the day. There's not, like, there's too many things that are trying to like, pull our focus so I want to try and do something to like connect with him and maybe like try to do some manifesting work together one of my favorite things to do with Vic and we do it like he is super into crystals he actually got me into crystals like he's really really into it but one of my favorite things to do is um we will sometimes sit down together and like write down a list of what we're grateful for Mm -hmm. and either like put it under a candle or you know give it like just put it under something, put it away somewhere, or if you want to burn it in a, like a positive way, whatever mm-hmm. like feels right to you. But mm-hmm. we don't read them to each other. Mm-hmm. We, it's just personal preference. But yeah. we, I think just like doing it, like kind of like, I've always noticed it like resets my day mm-hmm. or but the next day. If I'm like getting in a funk and I'm like, okay, here's all the things that are like amazing about my life. Yeah. It's kind of hard to complain, you know, right. about the small stuff when you have so many, even if you do like a pros and cons list. Yeah, I love doing uh, gratitude you know, work. Something. Yeah, I think it's like... I'm very listy. <laughs> no, I am too. I'm very type A, so I love a list. Like, I live for a yeah. list. And, like, the satisfaction of crossing it off. Like, yep. Uh, like a mini orgasm. <laughs> yeah, it's a great time. Yeah, we, we do something similar. So we'll do either, like, a gratitude list and do the candle, or we'll do, um, like, things that we're trying to manifest. But we don't look at each other's manifestations. Like, we keep that, like, private. So we'll, like, ball them up or fold them and put them under a candle. And it's just, like, I don't know, like, obviously, like, you can believe it or you cannot believe it, but at the end of the day, like, how you feel is real, and, like, we both just feel so, like, positive and refreshed and just, like, Mm -hmm. like, it's, like, a clean slate every time. So it's, like, something I want to, like, try and do every time. I think, like, the stress builds up, you know, with Mm -hmm. anybody. If you're going through life and you're just one stressful thing and then another, it just starts to all pile up. I think that's like just a way to like release everything. Mm-hmm. I, have, I have a million things to do and you're like, Oh God, I have to go grocery shopping. I have to figure out how, you know, my car needs work. I can't afford it. How am I going to afford it? You know, whatever the problem is. But if then if you take like the pros and cons, the cons are this big and you're like, okay, I'm happy. I'm healthy. I have a partner that loves me. I have a roof over my head. I have food to eat. I don't have to worry about, you know, paying my rent next month. It's right. Just reset. Mm-hmm. So speaking of all of that, I love that you're like a hippie like me. I know it's so rare. I'm like I have like a very small list of friends that I can like really say like crazy shit around, and other people are like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, I'm sure some people are watching this and they're like, "These bitches are crazy." Right? No, but like try it. Like just try it. Try yeah, doing some honestly. gratitude journaling or med- like meditate with like a crystal. Like it's just it's a different experience. It just is. I. I, and also, like, I had a friend of mine, I won't say who, because he'll make fun of me, but I had a, friend, a guy friend that's very, like, East Coast, who was like, do you really believe in that crystal shit? And I'm like, yeah. Do I think that if I buy a crystal, a million dollars is going to end up on my doorstep tomorrow? No. But if I carry something in my pocket, it could be anything. It could be my headphone case. And I'm like, okay, I want to get this job. I'm going to do everything possible to get this job. And put it in my pocket, every time I feel that, it's going to remind me mm-hmm. to do the work, to get, keep my energy positive and what I ultimately want as a goal. Right. So. That's how Eric looks so. at it, too. 
He's like, it doesn't yeah. matter if they, yeah. they're magical per se or not. It's like all the intention. So like if you're holding on to like this yeah. crystal and like your intention is to have more confidence every time that you see it, feel it, or reminded of it, you are going to have more confidence. So it's just psychology mm -hmm. at the end of the day. For all of you disbelievers. Um, <laughs> so like when it comes to like success, like how – how do you measure success? And then like, what is like your personal, like perfect world? My perfect world is now to be honest, not to be like, no, that's the great. answer. Yeah. But I definitely am in a place where I am perfectly happy. Um, do I want to keep growing? Of course, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm very happy and content and I love my life. I love my partner. I love my dog. I love everyone that's around me, my friends and family that I've chosen. I'm like in a very good space at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably measure success on happiness. Like kind of going back to what I was saying, like mm -hmm. people think that like, oh God, if I won, you know, it, it's kind of a little bit of both. If I won the lotto tomorrow, it's kind of hard to be like, I think it was like, a, was like Chris Rock, somebody said that. It was like, if you can't not smile on a jet ski, you know, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, if I get a million dollars tomorrow, I'm going to go fucking travel the world and be super stoked and I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. But if I don't have a partner or a friend, you know, there's still underlying tones like loneliness, you know. Yeah. If I want to do something that I can't do or – so money is, isn't everything. And I think a lot of people judge success based on money. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, success comes from happiness, safety, mm -hmm. um, just being in a place that you have – you worry? Mm hmm That's a good answer. <laughs> um, so I'm going to see if anyone had any good questions for you, and then we can do, like, your shameless plugs. Um, so uh, for all the mods in there, do we have questions that you guys were gathering that were good during this little interview? I love it. I also, like, I totally have a plant boner. Yeah, so I can see your behind you. <laughs> He's like one of the few ones that's just like thriving. Yeah, he's just living his best life. Do you believe, while you're waiting for the questions, do you believe in like uh, feng shui and like the nine, the nine grid and stuff like that? So our house is pretty much set up like that. And I feel like it's worked for me, whether it was because like my mindset like wanted to believe it and then these things like started changing. But like, I have like certain crystals like very specifically like throughout the house and like I have my work desk very specifically in an area. I had, it's so funny, so um, Eric's going to kill me. And Mav, you can just post the questions <laughs> here in the chat. Um, we were going through like a bit of like a sexual funk and I was reading the book that you suggested and we had our Roomba and our air filter and like a bunch of other like electric um objects in our love corner and they were saying that's like a huge no-no because that creates like a yes. cold space like in your romantic life and I was like this is why our romance is dead is <laughs> because the Roomba's in the wrong corner <laughs> and he's like you have lost your goddamn mind <laughs> but I moved the Roomba and guess what the magic happened so you tell me okay hey man yeah <laughs> I think it's also like symbolic. You're like, I want to fix this problem. Let's reorganize. Let's look at it from like a fresh eye. You know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. I totally. I'm. I'm. That's the other thing. I'm really into feng shui. I actually part of the reason we picked this place is because it like lined up correctly. Mm hmm. Um. Okay. So, someone wants to know your favorite painter. Check close. Like my. I have a. I'm a big Dolly fan. This is actually a gift. Vic for our first anniversary mm -hmm. um, but I love Dolly I love um, not that Dolly is but I love Impressionist mm -hmm. um, he's kind of more of a surrealist but Chuck Close is by far my favorite it's kind of hard to explain his art you just gotta google it um, he's a New Yorker I like literally like walk the streets hoping that I see him one day <laughs> because I will geek out <laughs> but he does if you look at his art, you'll understand where I draw inspiration from uh, because what he does is, like, he grids a painting. Well, his later stuff, his earlier stuff was just, like, very photorealistic. But his later stuff, he'll, like, grid a painting in, like, a hundred squares. And each square is an abstract painting. 
And then, so you look at each square, and they're like very cool abstract compositions, and you step back, and it's a portrait. And it is the coolest shit you've ever seen. That's so like, trippy sounding. Yeah, yeah. He's a goal. Like, if I won the lotto, I would just fill my house with his art. Oh, man. <laughs> like, so, yeah. He's I, I wish I knew more about artists. I just, like, I, like, see stuff I like, and I try to follow people like you that post stuff that you like, and then I'm like, that's how I get educated. Oh man, this yeah, is moving fast. Cool, and I, I have a little bit of art history, but honestly, like I get most of it from just like going to museums. Like I only know artists that I like. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an artist. We have a piece of Paul Rubens. He's a street artist in New York, and like he takes ink and just like does like contour like contour line drawings on the sidewalk. And you would only know him if you lived here, because you walk around all the time and you see his fucking name everywhere when you ran across the goddamn street. So, oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of just like, I, I don't know, like, if you mentioned an artist and I didn't like them, I would have no idea who it was. Mm -hmm. So don't feel bad. <laughs> um, someone wants to know how we both handle rude comments. <laughs> it depends on my mood. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say that I'm very um, mature and I ignore them and take, you know, but to be honest, if you catch me camming and I have had a couple of glasses of wine, I'll probably roast you. I love those videos. There's a little bit of in immaturity still in me, mm -hmm. but I try to just, you know, ignore it or um, block them. I'm a big blocker. I am too. I try to this do that instead really of responding. Yeah. Same. I don't. I, I try not to respond on like Instagram or if someone like leaves a comment. But if someone's like doing it live, I'm like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, favorite Harry Potter character and why? Ooh, um, Snape. Snape's my absolute favorite. He's my favorite. Is he really? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna tell you why for my reason, then you tell me. Okay. But, I'm, Sly I'm Slytherin, so I on it instantly liked him. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started reading the books, I thought he was a major villain, like everyone did, and mm -hmm. I always root for the villains. Mm -hmm. So I like, and then so when he turned out to like actually just be like, spoiler alert, madly <laughs> in love with Harry's mom and did it out of love and like did this like double play agent shit. Like his character is like so in like deep mm -hmm. that I was just like yeah he's by far my favorite but I also love um uh, I'm now I'm second guessing okay you tell me why you like Snape and then I'll see I'm like mm. so for me I'm a Hufflepuff which at first I was really upset about but now like I've fully owned it and I'm like well of course I'm a Hufflepuff um, but the reason you I look always get shit that you don't like, so of course you're all right. Of course, it just like it's the only thing that would have made sense. Um, I love all of my friends are Hufflepuffs. All are they friends. really? I've never yes, met another Hufflepuff. Oh my god, I'll text you after you're gonna geek out when you see how many people are. Yeah, but yeah, please <laughs> remember to do that because I feel like alone on this Hufflepuff <laughs> island. But so I like Snape, I, Snape I don't think was like my favorite initially until like I understood his character like all the way similar to you like he's just so complex and like I think I relate because I feel like he's so misunderstood even at the end and I'm like oh my gosh it's like the saddest saddest like character story right like it's like no one got him and he's really the good guy and everyone just like paints him in a particular way and like shoves him in this box and like that's where he's got to stay so I think like for me like I just like can empathize with that and I always kind of like like the I don't know not like necessarily like the underdog but like the guy that you want to like just like root for that's like a little bit sad and lonely just because like that's like how <laughs> I grew up like I was always picked <laughs> on like growing up um so I just like I can relate I'm like I get it Okay, I get not having they, friends. Yeah, when they showed like the flashback to him growing before you figured everything out, when they showed like him growing up with uh, his mom, when he had like the vision, yeah, I was like, I like you so much more now. Yeah, <laughs> I just fell in love. I liked him because he was a dick, and I like bad guys, so I was like, that guy's awesome. Mm -hmm. He fucks someone up, but yeah, then it was just yeah. I'm also. Have you seen like the? Uh, I was I was debating on whether to bring it up because it's like arguable for like Harry Potter nerd. Mm -hmm. But like I love Nagini. 
because I've seen the um, Fantastic Beast movies. But initially, when I watched, like, I, I didn't register anything. But when I started watching Fantastic Beast, I rewatched Harry Potter, and I like Nicky and me a lot. Who? Which one? The snake. The snake. His snake. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I love the Fantastic Beast movies. Like, I can't wait for the next ones to come out, which hopefully is going to be oh, next yeah. year. Obsessed. But there's a Hufflepuff Hopefully. in me. I just like all the animals. Yeah. <laughs> Let me screen this question really quick. Just make sure it's not a bad one. Um, oh, my God. I'm going to get your baby one of those mandrake outfits. <gasps> Please. <laughs> I want him to dress up like that for um, Halloween. Oh, my God. That would be so cute. What's the key to having a healthy, functioning relationship, um, especially, like, if there's, like, jealousy involved? Jealousy's tough mm -hmm. because I feel like jealousy comes from insecurity, mm -hmm. and I can only answer for myself, but I don't want to be with someone that's insecure. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. I'm sure you understand this, like being in our position where we're very much like a powerful woman mm -hmm. and we're in an industry revolving sex and everyone wants to fuck us and everyone wants to put their dick in our mouth and we walk the street and people come up to you and you're like, I've jerked off to you so many times. Like mm -hmm. you can't be with someone that's insecure. Mm -hmm. You have to be with someone that's secure. And like for me, like whenever I would date someone, if any jealousy came up, that was Maybe to some people it would be like a one. It was like a ten for me, and just like an instant mega red flag because mm -hmm. I can't. I don't. I don't know about you, but like I can't. I can't be with. I can't have the day. This isn't an easy job to have. No. And I can't have a day in this job already, and then come home to a partner that's jealous. No, I agree. You need like a like a really solid support system. And I've been in relationships where you have to think like. If I work with this person, is it going to be a fight when I get home? Mm -hmm. So you're now sacrificing your career for someone. It is just, it's just bad. Jealousy just, it just ends. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it at all. Same. Um, it's, you know. So if you don't feel secure in your relationship and you feel the need to be jealous, it's probably not the relationship for you, in my opinion. Amen. Which is sister. a really blunt thing to say, but. No, I totally agree. I think it's like, for some reason, we're expected to control all of our emotions, right? Like an adult. But when it comes to jealousy, mm -hmm. it's like the one socially acceptable behavior where you're allowed to act out and not have any repercussions. Like, it's the other person's fault because you can't regulate, which is so crazy. Exactly. Like, if you were to, like, punch somebody because you had an issue, you'd get arrested. Like, if you were to uncontrollably start crying all the time, someone would say that you probably need to go on some medication or talk to a therapist or whatever. But, like, what, if it's jealousy, like, that's allowed to run rampant for some reason. And I never yeah. understood that. And, like, I'm, I'm not a game player. Mm -hmm. I'm not the person in a relationship that, like, wants to play games. Like, if you know, I don't, I'm not going to, like, not talk to you for a week or be petty or text my ex if we're fighting or try to rile you up to start a fight. That's just not my scene, and I, I'm, I'm not into that at all. And mm -hmm. I feel like jealousy will lead to that. Mm -hmm. You know, you acting out to get attention because you're upset about being jealous, and it's just, oh. I agree. 10 out of 10, don't recommend. Right, 10 out of 10, <laughs> just, just leave. Maybe you should, if your partner's jealous, maybe you should stop and think, maybe you're not giving your partner enough to make him feel, or her, to feel secure. Whether it's like attention or love, or maybe you guys don't speak the same love language. Like maybe he wouldn't or she wouldn't feel that way if you were giving them more. Not to a point where it's toxic, mm -hmm. but you know, sometimes if I've been ignored all day, I wouldn't say I feel jealous, but I'm in a, like a, in a bratty mood. Right. And Vic realizes that he's like, oh, okay, and like spends time with me, and then I'm fine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in small doses of jealousy, that might be like a, a quick fix. I don't know. <laughs> no, I love that you brought up love languages because, so Eric and I took that quiz and we have very different love languages. Um, so I feel like that's probably the case with most people. Um, and you, you would never know unless like you like sit down and like ask like, what makes you feel like loved, seen, fulfilled in this relationship, or you could just take an online quiz. Um, but like for him, like he likes like a lot of like 
verbal cues. So he like likes me to like say I love you and compliment him. And like for me, like that doesn't do anything for me like personally. So I don't think to do that with him. Like he could tell me I'm pretty all day, but that doesn't make me feel like happier. Like I'm more physical. So I want to be like cuddled or have my hand held. So, and then he doesn't do that a lot because he's verbal. So knowing what your partner's love language is, is like so crucial because then you know, like, okay, I need to spend more time doing this because it's not second yeah. nature to me. A quick date night idea, a bottle of wine and the love language book, and you guys just both take the quiz, and you will understand so much about each other. Yep. Definitely. I love it. Definitely. Okay, so shameless plugs. Where can people find more Danny Daniels? Where can they follow you? Um, you can. We were talking about the fashion. You can go to shopdeanybox.com. Um, I'm actually having a huge sale right now because I'm getting ready for, like, new stuff that I'm going to be releasing, like, the bralettes and stuff we're talking about. So, like, a lot of stuff is 50% off. Um, you can buy my husband's book. It, he actually wrote a book called Wait for the Corn. It's available on Amazon. Um, it has, like, a bajillion five-star reviews. And he's like, I only know 12 people that read the book. So, like, <laughs> I don't know. So, I guess people like it. But it gives a lot of relationship advice and, like, talking about jealousy and talking about, like, a lot of the stuff we kind of touched on. Mm-hmm. Uh, if anyone's watching this and they just don't, they want to read more, he did a really, really good job. And I'm not just saying that because he's my husband, because if it sucked, I would totally fucking tell you. <laughs> yes, you would. So, yeah, and then um, you can follow me on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> million TikTok. followers on there, right? Yeah. Um, it's just, I love TikTok, so it's, like, been my jam lately. So, um, yeah, you know, and then, like, a.k.a. Jamie Daniels for everything else. Yeah, if there's a blue check mark, it's her, folks. Exactly. If oh, not, yeah. don't do started it. started on scams. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I had a lot of that fun. Fine. So, Dude, for someone that doesn't know how to interview, you did an amazing job. Thank Dude. you. I, you had me full. <laughs> That's all that needed to happen. I just had to pretend to be professional <laughs> for an hour. <laughs> It was like, oh, um, we were on the podcast, and I'm like, I just got an excuse to hang out with you. I'm into Right? <laughs> I miss, like, girl time. Like, we were usually in New York all the time, and, like, that obviously isn't going to happen for, like, a while, so this will be, like, the next I'm, best thing. I was going to actually text you this, but when all this is over, I'm coming out there, and I'm crashing one of your full moon dinners, because, like, I watch it ah! on Instagram, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to come. <laughs> They're so fun. They're so fun. <laughs> Me and my hippie girlfriends, they would love it. I'm going to literally just knock and be like, I have one. Can I come? Can I get Yes, here's a crystal. You get a crystal. You get a crystal. Yeah, and I know you're making some bomb food, so I'm definitely going to come. Yeah, it's just a (laughs) win-win. All right, well, have a good night. Thank you so much for joining. I love you. I love you. I'll talk to you later. Go follow all of her socials, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye.